The door acts as a barrier between our world, Earth, and the ghost universe. Ghosts are curious about unraveling the mysteries of our world, just as the ghost universe longs to access Earth. However, the method of opening this door remains unknown. But one day, Room number 555, in the past week, three children mysteriously disappeared from room number 555, sending a wave of fear throughout the entire school. The atmosphere became tense, and all the students were gripped with fright. Upon discovering the unsettling news of the missing children, Luke made the decision to stay away from school. Days turned into weeks, and finally, Luke's father comes to drop him school. Hey kiddo, don't worry at all. You're one brave little dude. Dad. I don't want to go to school. There's a ghost here. But Luke's father doesn't listen to him and sends him inside the school. With trembling steps, Luke enters the classroom. Many children inside the classroom start making fun of him. Hey Luke, it's your turn today. The ghost will surely take you away today. As soon as Luke hears this, he starts shaking with fear. But then Jack says, Don't worry Luke, they're just teasing you. Nothing bad will happen to you. Afterward, Luke settles down on Jack's bench. As the class comes to an end, all the children leave the classroom, but Luke remains seated on his bench, unpacking his lunch and beginning to eat. Suddenly, a spooky voice comes from inside the classroom. Luke gets scared, and his pants get wet. Who's there? Suddenly, a ghost emerges from the blackboard of the classroom and suspends Luke in the air with its long hands. Luke starts screaming. Save me, save me. In that very moment, a security guard is stationed outside the classroom. Save me. Oh, Save me. this voice is coming from room number 555. The security guard rushes to room number 555, but by then, the ghost had taken Luke away. Luke's lunchbox was lying on the floor, and there was a lot of blood under the blackboard. With urgency, the security guard blows his whistle, alerting everyone nearby. In a flurry of action, people start running towards room number 555, including Jack and all his friends. What's going on, uncle? I just heard a child screaming in this area, but when I arrived, there was nobody to be found. Hey, Luke was sitting in the class. After that, all the kids in the school staff start searching for Luke, but he was nowhere to be found in the entire school. Jack becomes resolute in his belief that room number 555, his classroom, must be haunted by a ghost. Jack quickly takes the security guard's phone and calls Yush, the ghost hunter. At that moment, Yush was enjoying a swim in the swimming pool. He had recently built a new swimming pool in the Gostaston. Yush comes out of the pool to answer the call. Guess what? Someone saw a ghost today, even in broad daylight. As Yush picks up the phone, he recognizes Jack's voice on the other end. Sir, I need your help. Our kids have gone missing from room number 555 in my school. Please come here as soon as possible. Oh, man. For kids have disappeared, and you're informing me so late. Sorry, sir. Please come quickly. Luke just disappeared, and there's a lot of blood inside the classroom. All right, I'm on my way. Yash swiftly gets dressed, grabs his gun, and sets off. Yash rides his bike at full speed. Room number 555. This case sounds quite intriguing. Finally, Yash arrives at Jack's school. And as he steps off his bike, Jack quickly makes his way towards him. Hey Jack, bring me to room number 555 quickly. Jack and Yash step inside room number 555, and gradually, all the children start gathering there. Hey buddy, something's wrong here. Yash's watch remains silent, indicating that there is no ghost present in room number 555. How is that possible? There's also a lot of blood spilled here. Yash thoroughly searches the entire room, but there's no sign of a ghost anywhere. But then Yash's eyes catch the sight of the board, and he realizes that something is amiss inside it. Oh, buddy, there are splatters of blood on the board. Yash inspects the splatters of blood and discovers that it's not blood, but tomato sauce. Buddy, this isn't blood, it's tomato sauce. Sir, Luke really liked tomato sauce. This must be his sauce. That means when Luke disappeared, he was eating tomato sauce. Yash presses a button on his watch, and a blue light starts emanating from it. Yash uses the light to examine the board, and the floor beneath his feet slides away. 
Inside the board, a world of towering ghosts becomes visible. Perhaps these ghosts have taken the children to the ghostly realm. I need to go inside the board. Yash attempts to enter, but finds it challenging. Now, what should he do? Yash starts pondering his next move. Only then does Yash remember that he can enter the board with Kitu's help. Yash remembers that Kitu had given him two stones. Yash immediately takes out two stones from his pocket and rubs them together. As he rubs the stones, smoke starts to emanate. Seeing this, all the children start clapping. Mission accomplished. Looks like I'm becoming a spectacle for the kids. Suddenly, amidst the smoke, Kitu appears. Tell me, Yash, how did you remember? Then Yash tells Kitu the whole story. This is the ghost universe. It's a dark world of ghosts. I can't go there. You'll have to go alone, Yash. But be careful, because you don't know what's there. Kitu performs her magic and transports Yash inside the board. As Yash gazes upon the breathtaking sight of the ghost world, his eyes widen in sheer amazement. Yash glances around, taking in the sight of towering trees adorned with menacing thorns and a scene that fills him with a sense of profound fear. I have a feeling that Luke and his three friends must be somewhere close by. Yash starts moving forward when suddenly a thorn pricks his foot. Oh dear, it made me bleed. But why is my blood turning black? Yash doesn't understand, but it's important to save the children now. Yash removes the thorn from his foot and continues moving forward. Yash sees a red water pond ahead. As Yash approaches the pond, he sees his reflection in the water, but it's not his real reflection. Instead, it's a ghostly reflection of Yash. Oh, this is quite an interesting pond. It's better to go inside. Who knows what might happen? Just then, Yash's attention is drawn to a child hanging from a tree. Without hesitation, he swiftly unties the rope. Yash then uses his watch to signal Kitu. The child disappeared from there and reappears in room number 555. Inside the room, as Tony emerges, a wave of joy washes over everyone, resulting in enthusiastic applause and cheers. But Jack asks Tony, Where are Luke and the other two children? The ghost hunter went to save all three children. Yash continued his search for the remaining children in the eerie ghost universe. The surroundings were shrouded in darkness, making it difficult for Yash to discern anything. Suddenly, a remarkable sight caught Yash's attention. Numerous trees adorned with enormous childlike figures. What is this? So many children have grown on these trees. Where did they come from and why have they grown like this? Yash rescues two children who inform him that they are from room number 555. Yash unties their rope and signals Kitu. Kitu transports them back to the classroom. But then, two big ghosts appear there. The first ghost was blowing very strong wind from its mouth. The wind pressure was too high, causing Yash to start flying in the air. The second ghost was throwing big rocks from its mouth. Yash uses water waves from his watch to break those rocks. OMG! These are very powerful ghosts. Yash takes out his fire gun and starts shooting at the ghosts. Both ghosts get disturbed. Yash tries to catch them with his gun, but his gun is not generating enough power to catch the ghosts. These are very powerful ghosts. Yash takes out a smoke bomb and throws it, then he runs away from there. Yash sees tall trees and big children everywhere. How am I going to rescue all these children? And to add to it, they're all unconscious. What on earth is happening here? In a timely moment, a child back to his senses. Are you Luke? Yes, they trapped me here. Yash immediately signals Kitu. But this time, Kitu not only takes Luke, but also takes Yash to room number 555. Why did you do this? There were so many children there, and I have to save them. The door was closing. The door to the ghost universe has moved somewhere else. No one knows where it is. Yash releases his wave on the board but it doesn't show anything. What's happening? Where did the door go? How will I save all those children, and why are they kidnapped there? You can't do anything there, Yash. The ghost universe is very powerful. You have to rely on your own powers. Power? What power? Where can I find this power? Yash was thinking about discovering his power and how to save the children. On the other hand, as night falls, Tom departs from his home and heads towards the forest. The moonless night enveloped everything in darkness. Tom embarked on a quest to find treasure in the depths of the forest. The forest resounded with spine-chilling cries of wild creatures. Despite his intense fear, Tom disregarded everything in his insatiable greed for the treasure. 
Gradually, Tom made his way to the heart of the forest. Upon his arrival, a surge of heightened fear engulfed him as he discovered numerous venomous snakes coiled on the trees nearby. No matter what unfolds today, I will persevere in my quest for the treasure. Tom retrieved his phone from his pocket and dialed his friend Harry's number. Harry, who was also en route to the forest in search of the treasure, received the call. Hey Harry, where are you? I'm already in the forest. Then Harry lets Tom know that he's about to reach the forest. Tom shares his location with Harry. Hey buddy, hurry up, I'm really freaked out. While Tom was talking to Harry, he hears footsteps approaching. Who's there? Who's there? But Tom doesn't receive any response, which terrifies him immensely. He quickly activates the flashlight on his cell phone and begins scanning his surroundings, but there is no sign of anyone around. Fear starts to grip Tom. Overwhelmed by apprehension, he instinctively climbs up a tree to seek refuge. As Tom listens intently for any lingering sounds, the footsteps continue to reach his ears. He calls Harry again, but fate takes an unexpected turn as a scorpion descends from the tree, stinging Tom beneath his shirt. Terrified, Tom frantically moves around, trying to dislodge the scorpion. Losing his grip, Tom plummets from the tree, landing forcefully on his back. The impact crushes the scorpion beneath him, causing substantial injuries to his body. Ouch! I reckon I've snapped my back. As Tom removes his shirt, a wave of shock washes over him. The lifeless scorpion lies there, its blood staining Tom's shirt. Without wasting a moment, Tom dials Harry's number, his voice filled with fear as he recounts his fall from the tree. Harry informs Tom that he's lost his way in the forest, but before they can continue their conversation, the call abruptly disconnects on its own. Why did the call just cut off like that? Something ain't right. Filled with terror, Tom bolts away from the scene. There was a gentle breeze blowing in the forest, causing dry leaves to collide with each other. Suddenly, Tom's eyes lock onto a towering banyan tree, beneath which a haunting structure crafted from human bones stands ominously. Tom quickly realizes that it is a ghost, as its head appears detached from any bone, suspended eerily in mid-air. Ghost! Ghost! Someone help me out! Tom becomes petrified and dashes off at lightning speed. While running, Tom accidentally collides with a man and falls down. When Tom looks back, he sees Harry standing there. Tom and Harry are both taken aback as they lay eyes on each other. Without a moment's hesitation, Harry rushes to Tom aid, helping him to his feet. Afterwards, Tom urgently conveys to Harry about the presence of a ghost in the forest, insisting that they should promptly retreat and head back home. However, Harry, skeptical of Tom's claim, assumes that Tom may have just caught a fleeting shadow, causing his distress. Harry leads Tom into the depths of the forest, heading towards the cave where the treasure was concealed. After a brisk walk, Harry and Tom arrive at the entrance of the cave. Dude, the treasure's stashed in this cave, our luck's about to take a turn today. Harry and Tom step into the depths of the cave. As soon as they enter the cave, suddenly a lot of birds start coming out, which scares Harry and Tom, and they lie down on the ground to save their lives. After a while, all the birds fly away from there. Harry man, hear me out. We gotta get out of here, there's a spooky ghost lurking in this forest. Ah come on Tom, those are just little things you find in the forest all the time. Don't lose your nerve buddy, I got your back. Fearfully, Tom goes along with Harry into the depths of the cave. The cave appeared enigmatic and shrouded in darkness, with faint rays of light filtering through its walls. The cave had a strange power to it, there were shiny stones scattered everywhere. Looks like we're in for a real treasure trove today. Tom peeks behind a massive stone and discovers a mystical door standing before him. Step inside, both of you. Step right in. Once you're in, you're gonna discover heaps of treasure and gain powers to unlock Earth's hidden mysteries. Come on in. Suddenly, a stone hits them and they both faint, causing them to lose consciousness. A shadow picks them up and throws them somewhere in the forest. After a while, they gradually regain consciousness. What the heck? I was just saying there are ghosts around, but where the heck did that cave disappear to? Tom, hurry up and call Yush the ghost hunter. He's the only one who can rescue us now. Tom immediately calls Yash, the greatest hunter of ghosts. Yash was conducting research on a ghost at that time. Keep your mobile phone on. I will track your location and come right away. Yash immediately mounts his bike and heads towards the forest. 
On his way, Yash spots a mummy. He starts following her, but she disappears near a pond. Yash parks his bike by the side of the pond and starts looking around for that mummy. He goes a little further to check, but he doesn't find her. Yash returns to the pond and realizes that his bike is missing. Just a moment ago, my bike was right here. Where could it have suddenly disappeared? Then Yash notices the water in the pond, bubbling vigorously with bubbles emerging. When bubbles start appearing in the water, it usually means something has fallen into it. That means my bike must be submerged in there. Yash immediately jumps into the pond. When he looks underneath the water, he finds his bike submerged, and the mummy was holding onto his bike, hiding underwater. Yash swiftly draws his gun, apprehending the mummy with precision. With the situation under control, Yash retrieves his bike from the water and brings it back to the surface. Yash diligently traces Tom's whereabouts and makes his way back into the depths of the forest. After some time, Yash reaches the forest. Upon entering, he is immediately surrounded by two formidable ghosts who utilize their supernatural powers, causing Yash to lose his footing and succumb to a fall. Yash's anger surges, and he swiftly attempts to activate his watch, but to his dismay, the watch remains unresponsive. What's wrong with my watch today? However, before Yash can react, the two ghosts combine their powers, overpower him, and toss him into the air. Yash hurtles toward the ground, but his swift reflexes kick in, enabling him to seize hold of a robust branch, averting a disastrous descent. Yash struggles and eventually makes his way down from the tree, but by then, the two ghosts have disappeared from there. Yash swiftly retrieves his bike and initiates the process of tracing Tom's phone location. Tom and Harry cowered atop a towering banyan tree, consumed by fear. I swear, I'm never setting foot in this forest at night again. You're right, I won't dare to step foot in this forest at night either. As Tom and Harry engaged in conversation, a ghost materializes before them, the ghost snaps a branch of the banyan tree, suspending both Tom and Harry in midair. Emitting a haunting sound, it summons other specters lurking in the vicinity. The chilling voice carries through the forest, reaching the attentive ears of Yash. Yash quickly starts moving towards that voice on his bike. Meanwhile, numerous ghosts gather and hang Tom and Harry on the banyan tree, leading to their demise. After a while, Yash reaches near the banyan tree. Upon witnessing the scene, Yash becomes very scared. This is really bad. Yash realizes that the ghosts have hung Tom and Harry on the noose because they were hanging in the air without anything below them. Afterward, Yash promptly climbs up the tree and brings down the dead bodies of Tom and Harry. He calls the police and explains everything. The police will arrive here in a while and take the dead body with them, but I won't let go of those ghosts. Yash starts searching the entire forest, but he doesn't find any ghosts. They were talking about some cave. Yash also searches for the cave, but he doesn't find any cave. What was in that cave and where did it go? Then, a shadow appears in front of Yash. Yash, the power of the ghost universe is growing. They want to uncover secrets on Earth. They believe that Earth belongs to them. You have to stop them. Ghost universe. Ghosts revealing secrets on Earth. How will I stop them? Oh, Sage, you should have told me. Now, what will Yash do? Will Rajni help Yash? And what is the ghost universe? We will find out in the next episode.